Hey everyone, it's William again, and we're here with the final rendition of Conan the Brutal. So as you can see, he's all wrapped up here, ready to go. He's got his patina layer on him, and uh, just enough bronze showing through there. So what I'm going to do is turn this over to Conan here, and let you get some close-up shots of him, and see what it's all about here, and I'll talk about it uh, while we're spinning it around. Alright, so let's talk about what I've done here. Uh, if you've been following along, then you know that uh, this was the uh, uh, preview of the kit that uh, we're going to be releasing here a little bit later on this fall. Uh, this one is actually going to be a uh, paint-up model for uh, the factory, and uh, so we'll have these as a pre-paint, and they should look very close to this. Uh, obviously, everyone is unique because they are hand-painted, um, but uh, this should be a pretty close approximation of that. And uh, so I just want to show you some of the things I've done here. Uh, if you've watched the other videos, then you kind of know the techniques that I've used here, so I won't go into that too much. It's just that I have used uh, powdered pigments mixed with Future Floor Wax to create the metallic looks. I have three different variations on that color, uh, some of them more subtle than others. Uh, two of them are very close, the other one's pretty far out there. And so for the base and the boots and most of the leather, uh, there's one color is kind of a uh, more of a traditional yellow bronze color. And then for his skin tones is more of a coppery uh, bronze, a higher copper content in there. And so once I painted those in, I clear coated him and then I started applying my patina wash. Now, I have two different, uh, two different patina washes here. I started off with a really, really uh, dark green patina wash, and that gives me a nice uh, base, and it darkens the, uh, the whole thing down, uh, because when you first paint this thing, boy, he was like a brand new shiny penny. And so uh, I want to knock some of that shininess off of him, and, uh, and that's exactly what we did with that first wash. We also laid down a groundwork there of this really old kind of moldy green color with that. And uh, it really did age the piece quite a bit. On top of that, I did just a regular oily wash. Now, when I say an oily wash, I'm just talking about the color, not, not the material. It was actually acrylic. Uh, as all of these uh, paints are, these are all total acrylic. And um, in that case, all I was trying to do was add even... Uh, more layers of say grime and age uh, to the metals and uh, I think it did a great job with that it really stained those uh, down quite a bit and made them look like a really old piece of metal here and then finally this last coat was the really bright green that you see in here uh, this was my kind of a fresh patina look and uh, and so that was the final wash that had gone on and uh, while I've been working with this, most of the time I've been using, uh, actually all of the time up to this point, I have been using a gloss clear coat. And uh, I use a lacquer-based um, clear coats for that because they dry really fast and they're, and they're rock solid. Um, so that if I do make a mistake with some of the paintwork here, it's easily to wipe it off because I am using acrylics. Uh, so it's uh, it, that uh, protective barrier there of the lacquer really helps me out with that. And so this is the result. And I'm going to spin this around a little bit. Um, I had to rework the chest here a little bit more. I just I was never happy with that. I, I would work at it, look okay, work with it some more, and work with it some more. And I just I was just you know I kept worrying about it, and and I think I finally got it the way I want it. Um, before I had a little too much of the patina in here, and uh, it looked good at first when I first looked at it. I thought it was great. Uh, then I stepped away from it for a little while, come back to it, and said. Yeah, it's not not working for me. So I took a lot of that back off, and it looks maybe a little more natural. Um, before it was just way too much patina, and so I took some of that out. Uh, but anyway, I, I kind of lightened up patina everywhere. Uh, with the other washes to to age the bronze and stuff, I just kind of slosh those on. But with the patina. Uh, I really want to be a little more targeted, so I looked at the little grooves and musculature here, and I kind of uh, just kind of drizzled it into those areas. I would also take and um, uh, paint over the area with just water uh, to begin with to just uh, give the patina wash uh, a way to run and spread and and basically just thin out on its own. And so this is the result now. Uh, up here on his body, it's a, it's a little more stark. There's a little more of a contrast between the patina and the background, whereas the smoother uh, edges, like his shield here, 
it's much more subtle. There's a there's almost like a layer of film, of patina film over certain areas in here. Not over the whole thing, but just certain areas. And um, and I just work with it a little bit to uh, to kind of get that effect. Now I'm going to spin him on around here because uh, you can see hopefully uh, the camera's going to pick up some of these. Uh, there's some little patina dripping trails, just like you would have on a real statue here. So basically, this patina, I guess, it comes from um, uh, the, the the environment there, and, and all the minerals and things like that, and the acids and the waters and stuff like that that just attack it, and it just kind of builds up. And so you kind of have these little water trails, if you will, where that stuff. Uh, is dripping off and so uh, I left some of those on here uh, softening those up uh, just took a little bit of work uh, once I put the little patina trail in there before it could dry I completely come back with just some water and uh, just clean water and brush that on and let that uh, kind of just self level out there so it worked out really good I put a few of those here on the column as well and they kind of I just kind of really just dropped the liquid up here on top and just let it kind of fall where it naturally would so it came down here and kind of went around this ring and then it found little divots in this ring and it would run down so I just I just let it rip let it go wherever it wanted to go uh, some of it I helped along I just thought you know just to, for visual interest I wanted to break some of this up here uh, so I did that and I kind of uh, help the uh, help the patina trail there a little bit with that stuff and um, uh, but uh, for the most part I just let this stuff all flow kind of naturally certain areas obviously didn't get uh, any patina at all uh, this any area that I thought like this area right in here I thought uh, and I know that's a kind of a difficult shot right there this little area right in here I just thought well that fold right there is exposed quite a bit so it probably get brushed up against and stuff like that so one it's really light in color and then it doesn't have any patina on it so uh, just different little things like that um, of course uh, just working the patina you know that was the biggest chore to me honestly was this final patina just getting it uh, to the level that I wanted it to be like I said at first it was a little too much and so I had to come back in and scrub some of it off and uh, scrubbing it back off uh, proved to be a bit of a challenge because then it was a broken up edge. So you scrub some of it off and you go back and you put a lighter coat of it back on to kind of hide your edges there. But uh, all in all, I, I love the results. Uh, I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, I don't think I could have done much more with it. Uh, I probably could. Knowing me, I would, uh, I would work it too much. There comes a point where you have to say, okay, enough is enough. Uh, before you just totally overwork it. So some really interesting stuff going on here. I really like it. This is one of my favorites. This is, uh, I don't know, maybe about the fifth or sixth bronze that I've done, uh, not just for quarantine, uh, but for some other folks too. Uh, and I'm, I'm really starting to groove on this. I'm really loving it. And, uh, and I look forward to doing some more of them. So there he is. Well, that's it, folks. Coden the Brutal. Uh, look forward to this coming later this fall, and uh, both in a pre-finished, faux-finished piece and as a kit. Uh, so if you want to do your own bronze edition or just paint them up naturally, that's fine. You're going to have the opportunity to do so in a true kit form. Uh, and that's exactly what I worked with here. So if you haven't been keeping up with the videos, well, shame on you. You should be watching these videos. I go back and look at the very first episode uh, of Conan the Brutal, and you can see the kit in the raw, uh, exactly how that kit's going to come to you. Parts break down and everything else, so uh, check that out. Uh, for those of you who've been following along uh, along this long journey of getting this little guy done, I really appreciate it. Uh, all of us here at Quarantine Studio appreciate your patronage, and, uh, and we look forward to bringing you some really, really cool stuff right here in the near future. All right, take care, guys. We'll see you next time.